فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى we're going to be starting a program in which ان شاء الله تعالى i would love to give it the name ضبط uh, العلم precision in knowledge and inshallah ta'ala we'll be going through seven books if time is left over and we have more time we will add an eighth book to it inshallah ta'ala but these seven for sure inshallah ta'ala we shall finish them and we'll be doing it in a uh, in seven consecutive days inshallah ta'ala starting from today ending on next week sunday inshallah ta'ala uh, we'll have the on this on this on this on the uh, on the Sunday coming up, we will have that session, inshallah ta'ala. So there will be class. And that will be our khatima, the ending of our program, bi'idhnillahi al-kareem. I'm going to start today with, inshallah ta'ala, uh, the program with the explanation of the book, Ta'zim al-ilm, glorifying knowledge. And I thought to myself, shall I go through that, that book, all of it today? And first of all, I was, I, was uh, I wanted to do so. Then I remembered that not every single day is the same people going to be coming. Because some people only want to come to Nukhbat al-Fikr or they want to come to Qawaid al-Fiqhiyya. So they'll only come for that book. But this book means a lot to me and I want every student of knowledge who is seeking knowledge to have to study this book. So what I did is, inshallah ta'ala, until next Sunday, I will do, be doing this book before we start the other book that we're going to finish inshallah ta'ala daily. So today we're going to do a portion of this kitab Ta'adim al-ilm and then we're going to do Qawaid al-Arba' written by Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullahu ta'ala. So we'll take a portion of this book uh, Ta'adim al-ilm then we will move on to the second book and each day as I said Ta'adim al-ilm will be taken for about two hours or so and then we will go into the other book which we plan to finish. So today, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be ta'zim al-ilm. And tomorrow, bi'idhnillahi al-kareem, uh, and, and also today is going to be ta'zim al-ilm and qawa'id al qawa'id al-arba. Tomorrow, on the other hand, is going to be uh, ta'zim al-ilm, and it's going to be nukhbat al-fikr by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah. And each day, I will let you know what next book we're going to be taking the day to follow bi'idhnillahi al-kareem. This book, ta'zim al-ilm, which, it, which means glorifying, honoring, respecting knowledge is written by a author who's still alive. His name is Salih ibn Abdullah ibn Hamad al usaymi rahimahullah. I'm a hafizahullah. He needs rahmah of Allah, but generally the scholars they use rahimahullah for somebody who is somebody who is dead. The Sheikh is still alive. He is one of the scholars who teaches in the Prophet's Masjid. He has a lesson in the Prophet's Masjid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he also, Shaykh Salih ibn Abdullah ibn Hamad al usaymi as you can say, he is a person who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave him knowledge with the ability to articulate the knowledge properly. And recently, Walillah Alhamd wal Minna, he was added and was made a member of Hayat Kibar al Ulama, which is the committee of the senior scholars. He was made a member of it. Generally, I am not an individual who likes to go through books of an author who's still alive. Because Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, فَإِنَّ الْحَيَّ لَا تُؤْمَنُ عَلَيْهِ الْفِتْنَةِ The person who is alive, you can't reassure that they will die upon a good way. They are open to they are open to mistakes and they are open to we ask and we seek refuge in Allah from it apostasy because the person is still alive and that's what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud meant when he said فَإِنَّ الْحَيَّ لَا تُؤْمَنُ عَلَيْهِ الْفِتْنَةِ Generally in our country Somalia and other places in the world 
the book that used to be taught in the early 60s and the 70s and even the 80s and even the 90s was a book called Ta'alim al-Muta'allim written by Az-Zarnuji rahimahullah this was the book that used to be taught it was the common book that people would study until of course a Sheikh Bakr ibn Abdullah Abu Zayd came and he wrote a book called Hilya to Talib al-Ilm this book Ta'alim al-Muta'allim is written by an author by the name of Az-Zarnuji az and he is the student of the author of the book Al-Hidayah. He is the student of the author of the book Al-Hidayah, Al-Marghinani. Marghinani is a Hanafi scholar who the Ahnaf admire his work and his book Al-Hidayah. This book Al-Hidayah has over 70 explanations on it. Over 70 explanations and the Ahnaf this is a book which they refer back to in its structure and the way it's written and how it speaks about different matters pertaining to fiqh. They admire it. One of those people who wanted to praise this book, in love of the book, he said, Inna al kal Qur'ani qad nasakhat. That the hidayah, this book, is like the Qur'an, it abrogated all of the other fiqh books. Ma allafu qablaha fi shar'i min kutubi. They never authored a book like it in the Sharia. فَحْفَظْ قَوَاعِدَهَا وَاسْلُكْ مَسَالِكَهَا تَسْلَمْ مَقَالُكَ مِنْ زَيْغٍ وَمِنْ كَذِبِ He said, memorize its principles, memorize the matters that are in it, take its path, your statement will be safe from mistakes and deviation and also lying. Now this is exaggeration, the scholars refuted it. They said, how can you say a book is like the Qur'an, it abrogates every other book? So some of the Shafi'iyya, and as you always know, the Shafi'iyya always have a, uh, a battle with the Ahnaf, and there's always that consistent argument between the Ahnaf and the Shafi'iyya. So the Shafi'iyya responded by saying, it is Qur'an al Hanafiya. It's the Qur'an of the Ahnaf. In response to what? Response to this statement. Anyways, the point is, we are going to take this book written by Sheikh Salih ibn Abdullah al-Hamad al usaymi The book, wallahi, if you look at it, you read it, the author speaks very powerful uh, in his language. His language is amazing, profound, eloquent. The Sheikh rahimahullah, he is a well-spoken person even when he speaks. So inshallah ta'ala, the book has a bit of complicated terminologies. So you're not only going to benefit manners and etiquettes from it, you're also going to benefit from it what? The Arabic language. And ya brother, my beloved brothers and sisters, ilmun bila adabin kal hatabi bila narin. Knowledge that doesn't have etiquettes and manners is basically like a stick which you want to make food from that, that, that doesn't have fire. Can you use a stick that has no fire? Can you make food out of it? No, you can't. Knowledge with no manners and etiquette is basically like that. It's knowledge that doesn't benefit in any way, form or shape. Without any further ado, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to start the book, Bidhnilail Kareem. Qala al Musannifu wa Fakahullah. I requested from the brothers to print the book. Nobody has printed it. Um, so the brothers, he, he said he's going to come and he's going to print it. If you don't have it, uh, and there's somebody next to you who has it, then try to share it with them, inshaAllah ta'ala, and use it with them. Because this book requires you looking at it. The author started by saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. Bismillah in the name of who? Allah. Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. Ar Rahman means the most merciful. And Ar-Rahim means the most gracious. Ar-Rahman in the Arabic language, it means the scholars, they've taken two stances regarding it. Some scholars, they said Ar-Rahman is sifa, to, sifa dhatiya. Some of the scholars, they said Ar-Rahman is what? Sifa dhatiya, meaning it's something that's connected to Allah, never does it detach itself from Him. That is what it means, sifa dhatiya. And Ar-Rahim is sifa fi'liya. It means Allah does it when He wishes, and he does it when he does it will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, Ar-Rahman would be like, Allah hears. Does Allah always hear? Naam, he's always hearing. As for Ar-Rahim, it's like sifatu nuzul, Allah descending. Is Allah always descending? 
No, he only descends when he wants to, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the difference between sifa fi'liya and sifa dhatiya. Some scholars, they say, no, the difference between ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim is that ar-Rahman is ar-Rahmatul wasi'ah. Allah's mercy is vast for the believers and the non-believers. That's what ar-Rahman means. So it's for the believers and also for the non-believers. Look at the non-believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave them children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave them income. You see a Muslim who doesn't have children, but then here we see a disbeliever who has children. The rahmatun wasi'ah, it's Allah's vast mercy. You see? And al-Rahim is al-Rahmah, which is rahmatun musila. It's a rahmah connected specifically to the believers. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا Allah is to the believers, one who is merciful. So Rahim is specific to the believers, the disbelievers don't fall under it. Then the author said after that, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ مَا عَظَّمَهُمْ وَعَظِّمٌ وَصَارَ إِلَيْهِ رَاغِبٌ مُتَعَلِّمٌ وَشَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ شَهَادَةً نَبْرَأُ بِهَا مِنْ شَرَكِ الْإِشْرَاكِ فَتُوجِبُ لَنَا النَّجَاةَ مِنْ نَارِ الْهَلَاكِ وَشَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَشَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَرْسَلَهُ رَبُّهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ فَبَلَّغَ رِسَالَتَهُ وَأَدَّاهَا وَأَسْلَمَ أَمَانَتَهُ وَأَبْدَاهَا وَانْتَصَرَتْ بِدَعْوَتِهِ أَظْهَرَ الْحُجَج وَانْدَفَعَتْ بِبَيِّنَاتِهِ الشُّبُهَاتُ وَالْلَّجَج فَوَرَّثَنَا الْمَحَجَّةَ الْبَيْضَاءَ وَالسُّنَّةَ الْغَرَّاءَ لَا يَتِيهُ فِيهَا مُلْتَمِسٌ وَلَا يُرَدُّ عَنْهَا مُقْتَبِسٌ صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه عدد من تعلم وعلم The author said الحمد لله praises to Allah ما عظمه معظم as long as one is honoring him The praise is to Allah continuously as long as there's somebody who is out there honoring Allah which is something that's going to be happen forever So it's Allah is praiseworthy forever وَصَارَ إِلَيْهِ رَاغِبٌ مُتَعَلِّمٌ And one is got, uh, moving towards him in seek and in passion of knowledge. As long as there is somebody out there who is seeking knowledge in desire and in love and in passion and passionate about it, Allah is praiseworthy subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word as sayru as Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, Abu al-Faraj, Ibn, Raj, Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, who has a book called Al-Mahajjati fi Sayr al-Duljati. He says the word as sayru means luzumu tariqihi. It is to be upon the path of his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa suluki sirat al mustaqim. As long as and treading on the path which is straight. So the author rahimahullah, hafidahullah, his statement here wa sara ilayhi raghibun muta'allimun. It means as long as there's a person who is upon the straight path, who is trying to tread on the path of seeking knowledge. But in what state? Raghibun, he's passionate about it. Wa ashhadu, and I testify, the author is saying. I testify. To what? Allah ilaha illa illallah. That there is none worthy of who? There is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars they say, La ilaha illallah means what? La ma'buda bi haqqin illallah. That there is none worthy of worship. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where did they bring this word haq from? That when they say la ma'abuda bi haqqin, where did they bring this term from? Bi haqqin. They brought it from Qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah. Thalika bi anna Allah huwa al haq wa anna ma yad'una min dunihi huwa al batil. Thalika bi anna Allah. That is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Thalika bi anna Allah huwa al haq. Allah is haq. Wa anna ma yad'una and everything which they worship besides Him is false. So the scholars, they say that La ilaha, it consists of two pillars, which is nafyun wa isthbat, negation and affirmation. You're negating uluhiyya from everyone. There is no ilah that is deserving, that has right to be worshipped. Except who? Then look at who you're affirming it for. Then you're affirming it for who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu Wa ta'ala. Wa ashadu and I testify. Alla ilaha illa Allahu. Wahdahu la sharika la. The word wahdahu is a 
مؤكد الإثبات وحده هي is is an emphasis for the affirmation that you've just come with which is what إلا الله وحده affirms إلا الله so when you say لا إله إلا الله that I there's none worthy of worship except Allah وحده except him alone the word وحده is affirming إلا الله is a مؤكدة it emphasizes on the إثبات affirmation لا شريك له is a what is a مؤكدة it it emphasizes on the نفي the negation which was what لا إله that there is none worthy of worship شهادة I seek or I testify a testimony نبرأ in which I free myself من شرك الإشراك the word شرك means net the net of or the uh, what is it that when you uh, you're fishing and you you throw your rod is it it's a rod right and what's at the bottom of the rod that you place there <laughs> the bait نعم نعم in order to what it is is in order to get the fish right so I seek I the testimony which I come with the author is saying shahada al shahada نبرأ بها in which I free myself from من شرك الإشراك the فترة you have to make it a فتحة so you say شرك ولذلك the scholars and the people of knowledge they say البدعة شرك الإشراك innovation is the net which brings about and it brings to you شرك that's what بدعة is شهادة نبرأ بها a testimony which I free my, the sheikh is all eloquent the way he speaks شهادة نبرأ بها من شرك الإشراك فتوجب لنا which necessitates for us the testimony brings about what النجاة success the testimony I'm coming with and the affirmation which I'm coming with it will necessitate it will bring about النجاة success prosperity from what من نار الهلاك from the destruction of the hellfire. That's the type of testimony I'm coming with. One that's going to save me and protect me from what? The destruction and the torment of the hellfire. وأشهد أن I also testify to أن محمد النبي نبي الله محمد is what عبده his messenger ورسوله sorry عبده his slave ورسوله and his messenger. This is where giving the Prophet a station between what? Extreme in exaggeration and extreme in what? Negligence. A station in between the two. Because some people, they disbelieve in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they say he's not a messenger. So they've put him below his status. So they fell into extremism in what? Negligence. And other people on the other hand, they went extreme in love of the Messenger. And they gave him divinity. They made him ilah, yu'bad. They worship him. That's another exaggeration. That's another extreme which is exaggeration. When the Shaykh is saying Abduhu wa Rasuluhu, it means Abdun Fala Yu'bad. He's a slave, so he's not worshipped. Wa Rasulun and he's a messenger. Fala Yukadab, he's not disbelieved. Rather, Yuta'u wa Yutaba. He is obeyed and he's followed. So Nabi Muhammad is a station between what? He has not reached Uluhiyya, Amar Rububiyya. He hasn't reached that. Nabi Allah Muhammad. So he's below that. But he's not an old, ordinary person as well. He's higher than that. So that station is where you place him. If you take him a bit above, you have fallen into what the Sharia has prohibited you from. And if you take him lower than that, you've also fallen into that which the, uh, the Sharia has, has prohibited from you. And he's the one who said that. What did he say when they praised him so much? Alayhi salatu salam. He said, لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى عيسى بن مريم. Don't go overboard on me. Like the Christians went overboard with what? Isa ibn Maryam. إنما أنا عبد. In another way he said, إنما أنا عبده ورسوله. I am his slave and his messenger. فقولوا عبد الله ورسوله. When you talk about me, say he's slave and his messenger. Then the author went on to say it. 
wa ashadu i testify anna muhammadan that nabi allah muhammad abduhu is his slave wa rasuluhu is his messenger arsalahu the messenger was sent who sent him rabbuhu his lord sent him with what bil huda with guidance wa din al haqqi and the true religion the scholars they said al huda here means al ilm al nafi' beneficial knowledge the messenger was sent with al huda guidance the guidance here means what العلم النافع beneficial knowledge ودين الحق means what ودين الحق means العمل الصالح righteous actions beneficial knowledge and righteous actions are the two things which our messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام came with this two together beneficial knowledge and righteous action is what makes a nation apparent over all other nations that's why Allah said ليظهره على الدين كله to be apparent, to prevail over all nations, he came with these two. Beneficial knowledge and the manifestation of those beneficial knowledge, which is righteous actions. So it can overcome and prevail over all religions. Even if the pagans and the polytheists hate it. The Messenger he has conveyed his message and he has fulfilled his duty. Our messenger, he has conveyed the message he was told to convey. And he's fulfilled his duty. Our messenger Allah brought him into this world, made him a messenger at what age? 40. And he died at the age of what? 63. 23 years, his job was to convey. Remember, the conveying what was what his responsibility was, not to place the guidance in the people's hearts. Allah says to be many places in the Quran, "Laysa alayka hudahum." The guidance in whether they take the truth is not in your hands. That's not your job. Inna alayka al Upon you is to convey the message. Sometimes we get upset when we give da'wah to somebody, and they don't accept it. We become a bit agitated and angry and we become upset. But what we forget is our job is to convey the message, is to pass over the message. Whether that person accepts the message, whether they accept that guidance from you, that's not your job. You're not one who takes over their affairs. Rather, the messenger was rebuked whenever he tried to والسلام, go as far as wanting to make them accept the truth. He would be told off, alayhi salatu salam. And he would be told that that is not your job. Muhammad, you are not one who guides whoever you wish. Allah is the one who guides. When he a prophet will come the day of judgment. There's nobody with him. Is it because that prophet was wrong? Is it because that messenger was misguided? It doesn't mean that. It just means the guidance didn't enter the people's hearts. The guidance did not enter the people's hearts. But did he fulfill his job, that Prophet and that Messenger? Of course he did. So the Prophet and he fulfilled his duty. He did what he was. And he made sure that he did. Hajjatul Wada, he said to the people, Allah al Ballagd. O people, did I not convey the message to you guys? And they all said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, you did. And the Prophet he said, Allahumma fashhad, O Allah, testify to this. Testify today that I have conveyed the message to these people. I have made them know of everything you told me, O oh Allah. And he passed over that which he was entrusted with, the amana that he was given. The Messenger وسلم, he passed it over, this legacy. means what? He made it apparent to the people. So there's no religion, as the Sufiya say, that from within the religion there are things which are bawatin, no one knows of it. La, la, that's not the case. Our messenger, he made everything clear. Alayhi salatu wa salam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, commanded him to do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told him, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We sent the Qur'an unto you, Muhammad, so you can clarify it for the people. So there's nothing that only a group of people know. 
There isn't. The religion, as the Prophet said, تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْمَحَجَّةِ الْبَيْضَاءِ I left you upon light, white. لَيْلُهَا كَالنَّهَارِهَا لَا يَزِيغُ عَنْهَا إِلَّا هَلِكْ The night in that day is day. Meaning there's no such a thing as a night. It's all day, 24-7. So clear. No one goes off. You see, there's even though the religion is that clear, and it is still white, there are also going to be a people who are going to deviate. Because Jahannam was made for a purpose, right? There has to be inhabitants of the hellfire that have to occupy it. Then the author said, إِنْ تَصَبَتْ بِدَعْوَتِي أَظْهَرَ الْحُجَجْ أَظْهَرُ الْحُجَجْ With the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنْ تَصَبَتْ means a standard. With his da'wah, what stood with what? With what? Adhar al hujaj the most apparent evidences. The Prophet's da'wah was based on evidences and proofs. That's what it stood on. And that's what his da'wah was about, alayhi salatu wasalam. It was not mere claims. When dafa'at bi bayyinatihi al-shubuhati wal And with his da'wah, alayhi salatu wasalam, he repelled when dafa'at means to repel something and to debunk it and to get rid of it. Bibayinati, the clear things that he came with, the proofs which he came with, it repelled as shubuhati the doubts and al lajaj. Lajaj is not lujaj. Lujaj means al bahrul wasi'. It's the water which is vast in which you can't see the other side of it. But lajaj means. At-tamadi fil khas is where is the arguments. With the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa da'wah, because it was based on proof, it repelled and it got rid of doubts. And it also got rid of argumentations. People don't need to argue. It's so clear. It's so self-evident. Alayhi salatu salam. That's the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uh, da'wah. فَوَرَّثَنَا الْمَحَجَّةَ الْبَيْضَاءَ the Messenger inherited us. He allowed us to inherit from him. Al Mahajjat al Bayda. The scholars, Al Mahajjat, they give it two meanings. Al Mahajjat is either at Tariq, the path, or Jadat al Tariq, the straight path. The Shaykh Rahimullah he said, Fawarrathan al Mahajjat al Bayda. The Messenger, he passed over to us. He gave us the clear white path. وَالسُنَّةِ الْغَرَّاءِ The word غَرَّاء and بيضاء are the same. It means white. Clear. That's what the Messenger inherited us. That's what he left us with. He did not leave us upon darkness, ambiguity. He did not leave us in mystery that we had to go out of our way to find out the answers for ourselves. لا. وَالسُنَّةِ الْغَرَّاءِ And he came with a sunnah that is white. Its job is nothing else. Except to clarify everything for you. لا يتيه فيها ملتبسون. He will not be lost. The word comes from تاه يتيه. It means to get lost. No one will get lost. لا يتيه فيها ملتبس. The one who's seeking it will not get lost. It's so clear and it's so white that the individual who wants to tread on that straight path and come to understand those proofs. لا يتيه, he will not be lost. He will not. He will not be lost. فيها ملتمسون. And ملتمس means what? A person who is looking for it. ولا يرد عنها مقتبسون. And a مقتبس will not be rejected. ولا يرد means to what? To reject. مقتبسون. مقتبس means a person who sees a fire somewhere. He takes a st uh, stick. And he does iqtibas of the fire. He takes the fire from the people. Why is he taking that fire? Why is he taking that fire? He's using that fire so it lights everything for him. And this the author is using is called in balagha isti'ara. That's how the eloquent of the Shaykh Rahimahullah is, Hafidahullah, sorry, is. Is that anybody who wants to do iqtibas of the sunnah, take from the sunnah in order to shine everything for himself, la yuraddi won't be rejected. He'll get it. That's how clear it is. وَلَا يُرَدُّ عَنْهَا مُقْتَبِسٌ صلى الله May Allah send salutation on who? عليه the Messenger. وَسَلَّمَ 
and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send peace on him. The word salah, we take the view of who? Abdullahi. We take the view of Abu Aliyat al-Rayahi. That Imam al-Bukhari brought in his sahih mu'allakan. Which is that the salah on the messenger, when we say sallallahu, it means what? Sana'ullahi, Allah praising the messenger. Fi al in a'la, in the upper, uh, upper gathering, um, the high gathering. Within the angels, Allah is praising the messenger. That is what it means. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah in his book, Jala'ul Afham fi fadl salati ala khayri al-adam, he expands on that. That some of the scholars, they said that the salam means rahmah. And he said that's not correct. Because the qawluhu ta'ala, the statement of Allah doesn't allow that to be the case. Ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahmah. Ulaika alayhim salawat. Min rabbihim wa rahmah. And in the Arabic language they say, wow fi asli lughati taqtadil bughayara. And the wow originally in the Arabic language, it shows that these two things are not the same. That they are two different entities. They are two different things. So this is one of the proofs. Ibn Qayyim, he mentions ten different ways, ten different wujuh forms in why salah can't be rahmah. It can't be. Ibn Uthaymi, rahimahullah, he said yes. But what Ibn al-Qayyim is talking about is rahmatul amma. Amma rahmatul khasa is the one that's specific to the messenger. So he got out of it like that, Ibn al-Qayyim. And he said that we can reconcile between the view of Ibn al-Qayyim and the views of the others by saying that ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahma. This rahma is the general rahma. And the salah here and the rahma are the same when it comes to rahmatul khasa. Are you with me brothers? That's Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin's nadar and his observation. لا يتيه فيها ملتمس ولا يرد عنها مقتبس صلى الله عليه May Allah praise him high above. وسلم And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send peace on him. عليه الصلاة والسلام وعلى آله and his family. The view that we take when we say the Prophet's family is two people only. Hashim and Muttalib. Based on the statement of who? Al-Imamu. Al-Imam al-Shafi'i, Al-Imam al-Shafi'i who said wa ala alihi, he said the word al, ahlihi is the Prophet's family and the family of the Messenger is Hashim and Muttalib Hashim and who? And al-Muttalib, those are the two that means alihi wa sahbihi is what? man laqiya al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mu'minan bih wa mata ala al-Islam is anybody who met the Messenger alayhi salatu salam and he died upon Iman walau takhalala tiridatu ala al-asahi we'll see this in Ibn Hajar's kitab Nukhmatul Fikr even if he apostate for a period of time as long as he came back he's still a companion we'll expand on that more in the kitab Nukhmatul Fikr written by Ibn Hajar wa sahbihi may Allah praise the pra may Allah send salutation on the Messenger and send peace on the Messenger wa ala alihi and on his family وصحبه and his what? His companions. عدد من تعلم وعلم. How many times? The amount of times من تعلم as somebody goes and seeks knowledge. You see? وعلم and as long as there's somebody out there teaching. May Allah send salutation and peace upon the messenger, his family, his companions. Here, my brothers, this faqra, the author mentions many things. He mentions that the Prophet's da'wah is based upon repelling what? Ash-shubuhat. Ash-shubuhat, the scholars they say, is al say the shubha is barzakhun, bayna al haqi wal batil. That shubha is a barzakh. Hayatul barzakh is what? It's between hayatul dunya and hayatul akhira, right? The shubha is a station, a level which is between al haqi wal batil. How is it in between the haq and the batil? From the outer, it looks like haq. From the inner, it's batil. That's why Allah says in the Quran, فَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَ تَلْبِسْ فَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَكْتُمُ الْحَقَ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ فَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَ بِالْبَاطِلِ This is what shubha means. Is that the outer, it looks like truth. But if the clothes is taken from it, and it's stripped naked, it's realized that it's falsehood. And that's what shubha means, doubt means. And the Qur'an and the Sunnah came to what? To get rid of that. As Allah said in the Qur'an, 
بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل فيدمغه الله says بل نقذف بالحق we throw بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل we throw the truth at the falsehood فيدمغه فيدمغه it comes from the fi'l دماغ أما دمغ it comes from the word the verb دمغ which is a أصابة دماغ it's when something hits the person's head the word دماغ is the brain right in the Arabic language the word دماغ means what is the head if you hit a person on their head and you crush them on the head what happens to them he dies right he dies from it ولذلك if you look at the tafsir al-jalalain by Jalaluddin al-Mahalli and Jalaluddin al-Suyuti that's why it's called Jalalain it's Jalaluddin al-Mahalli and Jalaluddin al-Suyuti both wrote it Jalaluddin al-Mahalli started from Surah al-Kath to Surah al-Nas are you with me? and al-Suyuti rahimahullah what did he do? al-Suyuti started from Surah al-Fatiha to Surah Surah al-Kath Something like that. If I'm right in my memory. Anyways, Jalaluddin al suyuti and Jalaluddin al-Mahalli, both of them, they, they done the tafsir of this surah. They were both what? They both done it. When it comes to the ayah, بَلْ نَقْذِفُ الْبِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ فَيَدْمَغُهُ أَيْ يُذْهِبُهُ It takes it, it destroys it. بَلْ نَقْذِفُ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ means what? When the truth comes, it destroys falsehood. Falsehood doesn't exist anymore. It can't be there. Now, I want you brothers to pay attention to this. And this is very, very important. And that is, Shaytan has a method, has a tariqa, a path which he treads on. And the path which Shaytan treads on does not change. He doesn't change that method. And that is, Shaytan will never bring about pure evil. Because everybody would recognize it. And everybody would be able to identify it. So he won't bring that about. What does he bring about? He brings about something that has truth in it and also falsehood in it. Because that's what people can't really distinguish between. That's what the soul is inclined to. You know why? Look at people today when you say to them, Akhi, get rid of television. How can you have television in your house? Get rid of it. They'll say to you, Akhi, I watch the news. Yeah, Akhi, I benefit from it. Sah? They'll tell you all the goods that are in it. Ya akhi, shaytan never brings about something that's pure evil. Shaytan will never bring about something that is pure evil. No, he wouldn't. Every single thing he brings about, he will allow some good to remain in it. And that's the problem where many people's issue lies. Is that they are not able to distinguish between the concept of what? That just because something has good in it, doesn't necessarily mean it's what? It's something that you should approve of or something that you should take on board. If I gave you a liter of water and I put a drop of poison in it, you would not take it. Would you? You would not drink it. You'd say, no, I don't want to drink it. Even that though it has a, it's just a drop of poison and the poison is little. Compared to the amount and the quantity of the water, the poison is what? It's very little, but you still reject it and say, I don't want to take it. So the Messenger Sallallahu came to bring about what? He came to bring about the truth and get rid of falsehood. Naam. Then the author goes, Amma ba'du. Amma ba'du means what? Mahma yakun min shay'in. It's badal from the word, Mahma yakun min shay'in. Whatever the matter may be. In English they say to proceed, right? To proceed. The author says here, فَلَمْ يَزَلْ Now we're going to enter the book now. Not the book mainly, but the, the, all of that was more of a four things that the author mentioned in, the, in this part. 